Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 1994 American adventure comedy film called Baby's Day Out. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Our story begins in Baby Bink's nursery. Nanny Gilbertine is reading a book that she has read to the baby hundreds of times before. Nevertheless, she reads it again. Downstairs, the baby's parents are discussing the photograph that the baby is having taken today. Meanwhile, the photographers are raided by a gang. Their leader, Eddie, studies their diary until he finds the Cotwell booking. The gang dresses up as the photographers and leave for the Cotwells. Mr. Cotwell leaves for work as his wife and nanny, Gilbertine, head upstairs to prepare the baby for the photo shoot. The gang arrives and unloads the gear from the van. Baby Bink is presented and Eddie is accidentally kicked by the baby. Mrs. Cotwell tells him what she wants and shares her disappointment that his picture has never yet been published. He asks to be left alone with the child as he needs to have his complete attention. Nanny Gilbertine seems suspicious, but Eddie's charm wins Miss Cotwell over. Immediately, the gang passes Baby Bink out the window together with his book. They make their getaway while Mrs. Cotwell is upstairs fussing about her wardrobe. In the woods, the gang remove their disguises, and eventually, Mrs. Cotwell returns to find a note. We have your baby. Don't call the police. Mr. Cotwell is on his way to the city with a fax note demanding a $5 million ransom for the baby's safe return. The gang are struggling to look after baby Bink, but Norby manages to change the baby's clothes to disguise the fact that it's a rich kid. To test the temperature of the milk, Vico dabs it on Norby's bald head. Norby hits him as it is too hot and the baby laughs. The buffoons continue to hit each other and the baby continues laughing. Norby takes baby Bink to the bedroom for a nap. Mr. Cotwell returns home as police and forensics are checking the house. An FBI agent asks to speak with Mrs. Cotwell, but she says that she has no time as she needs to search for her baby. He convinces her to stay. Back in the bedroom, Norby has fallen asleep and Baby Bink is looking at the book himself. He sees a pigeon on the window and a picture of some in the book. Baby Bink slaps Norby on the head, but he doesn't wake up. So the baby climbs out onto the fire escape and follows the pigeon up onto the roof. Back inside, Eddie is being annoyed by Vico. From the skylight above, Baby Bink drools and it lands on Eddie's neck. Eddie thinks that it is Vico's spit, so he gives him a slap. The baby giggles and the two men look up. When they realize that it is the baby, they wake Norby and rush out through the fire escape. The men try to follow the child, but he is still trying to catch the pigeon. He climbs across a board to the next building and Eddie tries to follow, but is hit on the head by the board. While he is stunned, Vico tosses the board away and states that people shouldn't leave things lying around. When they see the baby on the other roof, they try to jump but Eddie is still confused and falls down the gap between the buildings, hitting obstacles on the way down before finally hitting the ground. Now inside the other building, Baby Bink makes his way into the elevator. This takes him down to the ground and he makes his way out of the building. He crawls past the gang who are checking to see if Eddie is okay. Suddenly, a blue bus rolls up that Baby Bink recognizes from the book. His eyes widen and he climbs on board. As the bus passes, Eddie notices the baby looking out of the window. They give chase in their van. Inside the bus, Baby Bink falls into a shopping basket owned by a large lady. When the bus stops, Norby asks the driver about the baby, but he insists that there were no passengers with babies today. Meanwhile, the lady has alighted, carrying her basket. She squeezes past the van and stalks away. Suddenly, Vico notices the baby in her basket and they start to follow her. As Eddie reaches for the baby, the lady swings round and starts to hit the gang. They run away scared as the baby crawls out of the basket and into a store through some revolving doors. Suddenly, a young lady stands in front of him and asks how he got out of Mother Goose Corner. She picks him up and takes him back to the nursery. The gang regroups and tries to figure out where a baby lost in a big city would go. In the nursery, a baby is collected by her mother, but Baby Bink has stowed away underneath her pushchair. 
the gang are watching a news report concerning the baby's abduction. It is being filmed just across the street from them. Baby Bink has managed to make his way outside again and spies a taxi like the one in the book. As he heads towards it, he bumps into the reporter and she drops her microphone. As she bends down to pick it up, the cameraman shows the baby. Mrs. Cotwell has turned away from her television, so does not notice, but the gang sees and rush across the street. Baby Bink manages to get into the taxi with some other passengers, and the gang see the baby leave in the back of the taxi. Back at home, Mr. Cotwell answers the phone to someone who claims to know the whereabouts of the child. They rush to see him, and Mr. Cotwell gives him money to tell him where he saw the baby. He reveals that he saw it on the second floor of the building opposite, at the McRae's house. The police knock on the door and examine all children. None of them are baby Bink. Mrs. Codwell is clearly hopeful, then upset, and compliments Mrs. McRae on her beautiful baby. As the taxi arrives at its destination, baby Bink climbs out and crawls across a busy road towards the zoo, also from the book. The gang crashes into the taxi and then searches for the baby. Suddenly, they see him crawling across the road and panic that he might get run over. They dodge the traffic themselves, but still manage to lose him. As they search, they try to pass the blame over who is responsible for losing the baby. They notice his tracks in the sand leading to the ape house. Baby Bink is in a cage with the gorilla. As the gang screams, so do all the apes. Things calm down and they notice the gorilla is feeding Baby Bink. Vico is nominated to reach inside the cage and manages to grab Baby Bink's shoelace, but the gorilla pulls in the other direction. As the baby nears the bars of the cage, the gorilla moves forward and dumps Vico's hand. As he screams, so do all the other apes. Norby then tries to use a mop to pull the baby out. Eddie tries to distract the gorilla, but as Norby attempts to take the baby, the gorilla hits the mop and propels him up into the air. They decide to wait until the baby and the gorilla are sleeping. And then Eddie reaches inside and grabs the baby's legs. The gorilla wakes and grabs Eddie's hands and then lifts him up and throws him across the room. An orangutan claps. The baby follows the gorilla outside into his enclosure where the baby climbs under the bars and away. In the park, Baby Bink is enjoying watching the other kids playing. Meanwhile, Mrs. Cotwell tells her husband that this morning, all she wanted was her baby's picture in the paper. She got her wish. A concerned mother in the park asks Baby Bink where his mother is. He looks towards another woman and she assumes that it must be his mother and she leaves with her own child. In their van, the gang spot the baby and pull up next to him, but he manages to escape through some trees down a tunnel. They race to the other end of the tunnel and pick him up. As they return to their van, they learn the cops are inspecting it. Eddie hides the baby beneath his jacket as the police interrogate him. Eddie holds his hand over the baby's mouth and the baby bites him. As Eddie struggles to hide his pain, the baby then takes out his lighter and starts to burn him. Vico tries to draw the cops away from Eddie, whose trousers are on fire. The baby slips to the ground and escapes again as the cops leave. Norby and Vico rush across to help put the fire up. They then try to look for the baby. At home, Mrs. Cotwell wanders around the nursery. Nanny Gilbertine is just as upset and they console one another. Meanwhile, Baby Bink is on a building site watching the sparks fly from the workman's tools. He heads towards a discarded donut and is hauled up the building on a girder. Vico notices him and cries out. He tells the others and they enter the building site as the baby soars overhead. They take the lift up and Vico tries to grab him as he passes. The baby slides off the girder onto the top of the lift as Vico is left hanging from the girder. Eddie pushes Norby out to help him, but it only results in them both hanging there. Norby falls and lands on a wooden beam whilst Vico lands on Eddie. They spy the baby again and give chase. Eddie continues to fall until he lands on a huge bucket of cement. Vico jumps down onto a lift, but after several mishaps, he lands in a skip full of rubble. Eddie suddenly spots the baby and gives chase, but he slips on a board and is hit on the head by a flying hammer. In his daze, he pulls a lever and is covered in slime. 
Eddie continues onwards, but keeps slipping over. Baby Bink escapes on another lift to the ground. Eddie notices a passing crane hook heading for the ground, so he jumps on and grabs hold. Suddenly, the horn sounds for the end of the day, and all the power is switched off. Eddie is left hanging in the air as the baby exits the building site. Night falls, and the building site is abandoned. His two cohorts stand below and promise to save him. At home, the detective reports baby sightings throughout the day. Nanny Gilbertine recognizes the order that his sightings appear are the same as in the storybook. She knows that he will next be at the old soldier's home. Sure enough, Baby Bink is crawling through flower beds on his way there now. An old man spots him in the home and recognizes him from the television. The police are called and Mr. and Mrs. Cotwell race to collect him. As they arrive, the old men are all singing to Baby Bink, who is having a lovely time. They race to pick him up and take him home in their limousine. On the way, Baby Bink notices a sign with a clock in the distance. Mrs. Cotwell asks if there is a clock in the book, but Nanny Gibbertine says no. Mrs. Cotwell realizes that Baby Bink is trying to indicate where his book is. They turn back to get it and arrive soon after. In their apartment beneath the clock sign, the gang are licking their wounds. Eddie says that he doesn't want to hear any more about the baby, but suddenly they can hear a baby's laugh. Eddie picks up the book, and as they look out the window, they find that they are surrounded by cops. They are ordered to throw the book down and put their hands on their heads. Mrs. Cotwell retrieves the book from the ground below, and Baby Bink is delighted. Mrs. Cotwell tells him that it is the end of the story, and as we see in the book, they put the baby to bed to dream of all the wonderful things he'd seen that day. However, when they leave the nursery, Baby Bink pulls out another book from the bookshelf. Baby goes to China. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.